Okay guys, JH, welcome back. Okay, what I was wanting to touch on today as well was what we do with our hands in the backswing. And how we keep how we keep them down. As opposed to we get here and then they fly off. We've done this before. We've talked about it before, but I think it it's something that really needs you know, reinforcing and going over on a fairly regular basis. What I feel in the backswing is that essentially my arms go round my buttocks. This is what my swing feels like. That. It's not like that, but it feels like that. And that's the pressure down. It's the pressure down, but with momentum in the club head. So if you can actually hit a few shots where you feel, and it'll be it'll be daunting when you start, guys, because you think, hey, my hands are so low, I'm not going to generate any power because they're at such a low base at the top of the swing. But you will. So if, if you can actually just think about just doing that and have, watch how low this club is at the back, at the top of the swing. Now that's just a little, you know, three-quarter shot, and I and I call that a low-down bunt. The hands are low, and I'm just, I'm just, you know, glass top table guys. Here, I'm wiping the top of a glass top table, you know, with with a, with a polisher. Here, I don't know my wife see me doing that. We've got a lot of glass top tables. She'll have me polishing them. But that's what you need to feel. You need to feel that your hands are so low. And what you'll also feel when you do that is that there's no, no upcock of the wrists. What, what elevates the golf club in a backswing, guys, is, is an upcock of the wrists. But I don't feel that in my golf swing. I don't feel an upcock. I don't feel any wrist cock. I feel a wrist hinge. That is a wrist hinge. That's a cock. That's a hinge. And I've said this before many times in the JH videos and on the JH practice team that I'm a hinger, I'm not a cocker. I hinge. Now if you hinge going here, and if you watch Bill Phillips at MMI Golf, if you watch Bill from the start of his backswing and you slow it down, what you'll see happening in Bill's swing is he pulls the handle back. He pulls the handle like that. How is he doing that? What is he doing guys? He's starting to hinge in his wrists. He's starting to hinge that lead wrist, getting here and then he back hinges it against it. He gets it back here, that's called a negative load, and then he gets into positive load. We go negative, positive. And by having a wrist hinge as opposed to a wrist cock, it just lets you keep the club low in the backswing. Most of the time, the reason that the club gets up is because there's this wrist cock, which, what does that do? It separates the arms. As soon as I think wrist cock, this arm's come away straight away, here. And as I get to here, this one will come away. But if I think wrist hinge, watch this lead arm. It doesn't move. See that? If I think wrist cock, that arm comes away. Watch this. On the backswing, wrist cock, that arm's away and disconnected. Wrist hinge, it's still there. Now we don't want to fire when, when we hinge it back, we don't want to hinge it back so the club gets way behind our forearm, here. Because that'll be hard to get back from there. You just want to get it to there. See, that's still in line. But you want to have that effect. There. It's a paintbrush, guys. And just hit a couple of little half shots. I call that painting. Just a paintbrush. Push down and hinge. If you did a hundred of those at that tempo, what it does is that it will start to isolate 
the feeling of that, that trail foot pushing down because when you're swinging really fast and your arms are getting a little flappy and away from your body it takes away the isolation thinking that you need for that trail foot now when I do that there and I do it slow like that I really do get the the isolation feeling of that trail foot here so I'm just gonna push it down and just hinge just do that guys just hit see that's this is a five on that and that's carried about with that little so it's carried about 140 yards with that tiny little golf swing but that will give you the feeling of keeping the club down and a hinging action because as I showed you anytime we think cock the arm gets away we think hinge and what, what Bill Phillips does at MMI, you watch Bill. Bill goes here, the club, he, club head stationary, he actually lags the shaft. Bill actually does this. He gets a lot of, la a lot of back lag in the swing. Now you've got to be careful that you don't get, you know, you don't get it going in behind your body because it's hard to recover from there. But all we're talking about here is keeping the club down, keeping some pressure down and some pressure on that trial foot. So we'll do a bit of hinging. It's pretty good. Now guys, it's a constant it's a constant effort. I've been working so hard on this to get to get the five o'clock nose back, to keep the back of my neck in place, to keep some pressure down there. Okay, we know what the protocol is, but to embed the protocol is an ongoing work in progress. You just got to keep working on it, guys. You can go through the protocol, all the the sequences of it and the parts of it, and your protocol and your numbers and the parts that you associate with your numbers, whether they're four parts, five parts, six parts, or whatever. But you have to constantly reinforce those, those parts and the application of those parts. I just find that the, that the five o'clock nose and um, keeping the neck in place is tough. It's, it's just hard to do for me, and I didn't realize how much I obviously did try to get out of the the shutdown position uh, with my shoulders before before I now am aware am acutely aware of uh, how much discipline is required to actually keep it back there so that's perfect I mean that's just perfect but I was thinking about all that there. And you've got to do that, guys. I mean, I actually, I actually felt that. I felt like there was a stake down through the back of my neck here. Had a dress and was still there when I hit it. And that five o'clock nose was back there when I had weight going down through my trail foot. So, guys, if it's hard for me, I can imagine how hard it is for you guys. I get a lot of time to do it, so people that only have, you know, a minimal amount of time or once a week, or once every couple of weeks, you know, I, it's tough, guys. But it's worth the effort, I think. If you put the effort in, you'll build a golf swing that, that'll stick with you. The good thing that's interesting is that whenever you see any people trying channel lock at the moment, even as rudimentary as they may be, they all look the same. They all look the same because structurally they're all doing the same thing. You watch everybody. Everybody looks like this. They look like that. Now you you get a hundred conventional golfers. They'll all, all look different because the ball will be in different places. You know they'll have different shoulder alignments open or closed, different weight distribution. But we don't have any of that. Our ball's back here and our weight is back here, and our head is back here. So we all look the same. We all have that locker's look. Now we will all look different in sorts 
in the course of our channel lock swing because we're all built differently. We've got different coordination factors and um, and as a result of that we will physically look different but at address we should all look the same and and I've noticed with with everybody and particularly the guys that that Bill Phillips at MMI and uh, Matt Gray set up to the ball they all look the same they all look the same and even the people out here when I go through the protocols with them and set them up they look the same so you'll be able to see a locker, you know, 40 yards away, so he's a locker. Because he looks like we do. We should all look the same. Okay guys, just a couple of things that I think might be, uh, might be of, um, of help to you. Have a look at that and shoot me off some comments. That's what the channel's about.